Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's edition of STEM Pro Live. My name is Marlis, and I'm with the Maricopa County School Superintendent's Office and your host of STEM Pro Live. I'm so excited to be here today at Odyssey Aquarium in Scottsdale, Arizona, with both Mary and Hutch, two members of the Animal Care and Education team here at Odyssey. They're going to share their stories with you about how they first got interested in science, how that led to their careers and their jobs here at Odyssey today, uh, talk about what they do, and then, as always, during our second portion, uh, we'll be answering the questions you're able to send in through your viewing screen there, or your teacher's able to send in. Um, they'll be answering those during our second portion. Uh, again, thanks so much for joining us today, and I'm going to turn it over to Mary. Hi, everybody. My name's Mary, and I am the Senior Animal Care Specialist here at Odyssey Aquarium. Um, we're part of the Animal Care and Education team. Uh, I'd have to say, when I was younger, I had an affinity for animals in general, um, but swimming was probably what escalated that. So uh, I started swimming at about seven or eight uh, competitively, um, and anytime there was a pool, you'd find me in it. Uh, a lot of my family also grew up near the ocean, so that was also something that led to my fascination with ocean life. I was always digging in sand and getting dirty and all that fun stuff that we're all interested in. Um, and that led me to realize that early age, uh, animal care was what I wanted to do. So I started off probably in fourth or fifth grade, uh, not doing so hot in math and science. It was a struggle for me for sure. One of the things that got me through was asking for extra help. My parents really pushed me to ask for help. Um, and I had some really great influences and teachers that were able to do that. Um, and as it progressed, I knew that I was going to have to study for a very long time, um, spend that extra work. And that continued with me all the way through college. College, I had professors to help me also, but I studied twice as hard um, because math and science are pretty important to my field that I'm in right now. Um, so that was something that really fueled me and kept me going. Those professors that helped me out through college also um, helped me get my first internship. So that was one of the first hands-on experience that I got at, uh, in animal care. Um, and I did a bunch of different internships, but that very first one I knew that I was gonna have to get over my shyness and stage fright, which was another struggle for me. It was not my strong suit. Um, still isn't, it's something that is always a work in progress, um, but I had to get over it because I knew that I needed to educate the public to get them inspired just as much as I was about science and animals and conservation. So it was really important to me. Um, after about five internships or so and uh, four years, I got my first um, seasonal job in Jackson, New Jersey. Um, and two years later, after I got hired, I was the sea lion supervisor, which was pretty cool. It was probably the best part of my job. Um, and then nine months later, I got hired as the senior animal care specialist here at Odyssey Aquarium. Um, and it's the story I wrote. Um, so here at Odyssey, something that's extremely important to us is going to be that education factor. Um, and that's one of the ways that we have our outreach program. Um, and we want to make sure that we reach everybody and get them inspired just as much as we are. Um, and Hutch, what's your story? Hi there, everybody. Uh, I do go by Hutch. My name is Jen Hutchins, so it's a pretty easy transition for me. Uh, so I've been known as Hutch my entire life, and uh, I am an animal care uh, specialist here at Odyssey Aquarium, and my main focus is the penguins. Uh, so uh, very hard cleaning is a very important part of my day, and I kind of had that worth ethic growing up. So uh, my parents were always very much, if you wanted an animal, you had to clean and feed up after it. Uh, uh, and make sure that you are taking care of your responsibilities. So that was instilled in me very, very young. And I always knew that I really wanted to work with animals. Uh, I actually forego, I forewent uh, several uh, birthday parties so that I could save up and go to SeaWorld for my eighth birthday. Uh, so it was always a very important part of my life and I knew that I wanted to not only be in education but I also wanted to work with animals. Uh, my background is extremely varied. Uh, when I first started out uh, in the employment world I started off as a lifeguard because swimming was a very important part of my life. Uh, as a small child I was always a fish. My mom actually put highlighted uh, hair bands in my hair so that she could find me, uh, as well as my sister. So we had different colored hair bands. 
Uh, so she, she was a very important part of my life, of course. And uh, she always told me, no matter how hard it got, try harder. Uh, so she definitely gave me the, the fuel to follow my dreams. And I told my guidance counselors in middle school and in high school that I knew exactly where I wanted to be. Uh, so I told them that I wanted to go to Fairleigh Dickinson University and I wanted to work in animal care. And they always told me to keep my options open because they thought I'd be a great engineer or school teacher. Uh, there was a lot of different paths that they saw for me, but I knew exactly the path that I wanted to take. Uh, I've actually, uh, in animal care, I've varied it up quite a bit. I've worked in biomedical research. I've uh, been able to t teach math and science at a high school. Uh, and I've also worked in rehab and rescue uh, efforts. And then I did finally uh, find myself in an aquarium, uh, being able to work with marine mammals as well as hippos and penguins uh, gave me a really good drive. So that's where I was before coming out to Odyssey. Uh, my mom always thought I was going to be a school teacher, but very important part of my life is not only the education part, but also interacting with the animals every single day, building those relationships and sharing those relationships with our guests. Uh, so if they come to the aquarium, they can see that we're taking excellent care of all of our animals here, and it will drive them into conservation efforts as much as, uh, as, much as my passion uh, allows to transform or transcend to them. Uh, so. Education and, and conservation are all very important parts of, of our days, and uh, we try to share that with our guests every single day. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mary and Hutch, for sharing. Now they're going to take us around a little bit and show us what their jobs day-to-day uh, -day look like. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Odyssey Aquarium. A big part of my job here is educating the public on our amazing animals, especially our ambassador animals. These guys are super important to our ecosystems and everything that we do here at Odyssey. So I am going to go out there and talk to the guests and I want you guys to come with me. Hi again. So this is Pickles, our three banded armadillo. She is part of our animal ambassador program here at Odyssey Aquarium. So something special here at Odyssey is that we have a collection of animals in our family that live in our back of house areas that come out onto the floor to surprise our guests every single day. Something really cool about that program is that none of those animals live in water. So although we're at an aquarium, we want to make the draw that all animals are important, not just the ones that live in the water. So we are in the pinniped kitchen right now. Um, you might be wondering what a pinniped is exactly. So a pinniped consists of three different species, one being a walrus, the second being a sea lion, and the third being a seal. So we have two out of the three here at Odyssey Aquarium. We have six California sea lions and one Pacific Harbor seal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of the food in our refrigerator right now. So we made our buckets for our next two sessions. So one of them being this big boy right here. So this is Hondo's bucket. It's about a four to five pound bucket. And you see we have two different types of fish in here. So this is going to be capelin, which is a small schooling fish. And this is going to be herring. So herring is for the fat or the calorie content, um, which is going to make them gain that weight. But we also have that capelin that's going to be a big water source for these guys. Now you might say, well, this is a really large fish for you know an animal of that size. They actually swallow their fish completely whole. Um, and they don't chew it at all. So out in the wild, they would use their teeth in order to catch and hunt the fish, whereas here they don't have to do that because they are hand-fed. Um, so something cool about animal uh, pinnipeds in general is that they are going to need a salt source, just like we do as humans. Um, they live in salt water, so they actually absorb it right through their skin. So they do not drink the water that they live in. Like I said, they're gonna get that water source through capelin, but we also give them jello. They seem to enjoy jello quite a bit, depending on the animal, some more than others, um, which is going to be a different water source. It is flavorless and sugarless, but we do, from time to time, dye it just to be fun and creative. Um, and that's one of the ways, like I said, they get that water, so water source, but also if uh, fish were be depleted out in the wild, which we would never hope for, uh, we can supplement with vitamins and minerals and different nutrition right inside that jello. We also give them squid, which is just fun to play with when you're a pinniped. Well, a very important part of my day is actually taking care of all of our penguins. We do have 30 African black-footed penguins here at Odyssey. Uh, this is Jazzy. Uh, she's slightly spoiled, uh, so she will spend a lot of time with our animal care specialist. She even prefers to be held like a baby, so she'll definitely show that off just a little bit. There we go. Uh, 
We do spend a lot of time up here relating with all of our birds and feeding them is a very important part of our day, but of course cleaning. So if you do see that we, we have a little bit of a mess, it's actually halfway through. Uh, one of our lovely interns was in here scrubbing away uh, because we do run programs here every single day. So it's a very important part of our day to educate our guests and we do that through behind the scenes programs uh, so that we can make sure that we're sharing our passion about all the animals that we work with and how we can make their lives better uh, through conservation efforts, uh, even something as simple as bringing a recyclable or a reusable water bottle every single day. You're gonna go grab a coffee, bring that mug with you and it helps take care of all of our lovely animals uh, and definitely helps these guys out. Even though they're all the way in Africa, we can make a big impact for them right here in Arizona. So one of the, my favorite things about penguins, uh, they are relationship based, especially Africans, uh, to be able to train them to do different things. So just asking Jazzy to come up onto the scale is a very important way that um, we can make sure that we can monitor her health. So we will check their weights as well as make sure that their feet are looking really nice and pristine. Uh, we do give them a nice little varied surface, so we'll bring in different mats uh, and different materials. Jazzy really likes towels, so that's a very easy way to be able to transition her being able to uh, hang out on one of her favorite materials, but she also gets that weight done as well. So you're looking at three of our younger penguins. So okay. they'll have that juvenile plumage until they're a year and a half to two years of age. And then they will look just like Jazzy. Now you can see that they come in different shapes and sizes. Uh, one of our very important ways to be able to identify them is their friendship bracelet on their left wing. But they also have a unique pattern, a unique spot pattern on their chest and bellies so that we can identify each and every one of our penguins by sight. When you do have 30 hungry beaks coming at you at the same time, say morning and uh, so breakfast and, and dinner, uh, it gets a little bit hectic. So that nice little friendship bracelet does a very nice job of being able to tell them apart. Each one of their colors, one of those beads just means uh, a different number. Well, thanks for joining us here at Odyssey Aquarium. This is a large part of what we do, but we do so much more. So I encourage you all to come out and visit us here and we look forward to seeing you all. Thanks for joining us. All right, now we're going to transition into our question and answer time. We've got a lot of great questions already coming through. Continue to send those in and we'll get to as many as we can in the next uh, 16 minutes. Um, yeah, we want to get to as many as we can, but we also know classroom time is important, so we want to um, get you back um, to your regular schedule regularly scheduled activities as quickly as possible. So Marion Hutch, thanks so much again for being here. We're going to start off with how long uh, does it take to become a trainer of animals and um, learn to do what you two do? You want to take it? Sure. Um, we all have at least a four-year degree in, uh, in an animal-based field. So my degree is in marine biology, but we have animal physiology on our team. Even uh, psychology is very important when it comes to the learning behaviors of all of our animals. So we do have at least a, a Bachelor of Science in, uh, in, for each one of our staff members. Fantastic. And related to that, um, a question came in from the same classroom. How long does it take to build trust with the animals in your care? And also, why is, why is that important? So it's a great question because every animal is different, just like we are. Um, so some of us are more shy, some of us are very outgoing. Um, so the very first thing that we do with all of our animals is going to be building that trusting relationship. They need to know who we are, we need to get to know them. So we observe them a lot, interact with them a lot. Um, and so it really just depends on the animal's comfortability level. So we play to their strengths um, and we try to work around those weaknesses that they might have. Um, but yeah, it just depends on the animal. Perfect. And we also had a few questions that came in that kind of asked uh, similar things, so I'll ask them all together. How many people are on the animal care and education team, and then how many animals do you take care of all together and then individually? All right. Well, um, we have 20 animal care specialists on our team in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, we work with a collection of sea lions, sloth, parrots, penguins, reptiles, and even insects. Uh, uh, the otters as well. So uh, we do have quite a few animals that are under our care, at least 
60-ish uh, animals under our care. Uh, Mary specializes in our pinnipeds, and uh, my area is with the penguins, reptiles, and insects. Uh, so we, uh, we all work as one big team. We can go to each other's area and be able to work with all the animals within our care. Yeah, and if I could snowball off of that, kind of what our day looks like maybe. Yeah. Um, so half of it is probably cleaning. The other half is gonna be broken down in being with our guests and being with our animals. Um, so it's very important to keep that cleanliness. We do have a team of educators and interns that are also able to reach the, the, our guests uh, on that individual level. Um, so that's our day in a nutshell, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Very good. And then a lot of questions coming in about um, particular things people, students want to know about the penguins or about the sea lions. So we'll start with some of the penguin questions. Um, what do penguins eat and what do you feed the penguins here? Uh, we do give them a restaurant quality fish here at Odyssey. So we offer them capelin, uh, herring, as well as anchovies. In Africa, uh, very popular for them to eat would be sardines, squid, as well as anchovies. So they do get one of those fishes here at the aquarium. We always base it off of uh, nutritional content as well as moisture. Uh, so we want to make sure that they get their, uh, their nutritional needs every single day. Mm -hmm. And somebody asked in particular, what is Jazzy's favorite food? <laughs> uh, Jazzy, uh, she's a very well. interesting uh, character. Yes, uh, she, she does run off of hugs and kisses almost every day. <laughs> um, but she also, she switches back and forth between our different fishes, but um, she seems to have a favorite during that time. Uh, so she started off really liking the capelin, but it was very particular on what type of capelin. Uh, so, you know, couldn't couldn't be too thin or too thick, uh, and it had to be a pretty sturdy fish. Uh, and then she switched over to the herring, and now mm -hmm. she's a very big fan of the anchovies as well as the cape one. Mm -hmm. And how tall do, I guess, the penguins you have here get? Because I know there's a variety of species yeah. of penguins, so. Uh, our, sp our species is the African black-footed penguin, and they usually get around two feet tall. Awesome, and someone else asked, um, how cold is it in that penguin exhibit? It is not cold at all. It is usually between 68 to about 72 degrees mm -hmm. in the air. Awesome, which would be what it is where they're from. Perfect. Um, and uh, how long is the penguin tour that you mentioned? Uh, we do have our penguin interaction tour that mm -hmm. does our penguin interaction program, PIP, uh, that we can bring guests behind the scenes. Uh, it's up to eight people per group. Uh, and that runs about 45 minutes from our educational program programming all the way into our interaction with the penguins. Uh, we do photos and playtime, uh, but we are also very much about the educational component of it because unfortunately African penguins are endangered. So we want to make sure all of our guests uh, leave here learning something new and a new way to be able to take care of uh, planet as well as the penguins. Very good. And switching over to Mary, sure. several questions about the sea lions coming yeah. in. Um, first off, uh, in several in some of the footage that the classrooms just saw, you're holding a football. Can you talk about why you're holding a football there? Sure. <laughs> um, so a big part of our day when we're interacting with our animals is going to be um, giving them enrichment. So that consists of anything that changes their environment. Um, so I am playing at the window with them, which is something that they seem to enjoy. They like interacting with people, different people. Um, they can definitely see us through the glass, so it's just a different perspective. Um, instead of being face-to-face -face with them, it's a, a different way that we can interact with them. So we actually have to teach them um, to like toys. So out in the wild, um, they are technically a more prey species, so they kind of have to watch their back out in the wild. So um, it's either a fight or flight response kind of thing. Um, so we teach them to play with toys and the way that we do that is uh, we give them fish just for either looking at the toy or touching it or some form of interaction uh, with that toy. So um, they've kind of learned you know, to interact with the toys which is really cool because it's just another way that we can change up their day and make it variable and unpredictable. Awesome. And then you talked uh, during the part that uh, students just watched about uh, a little bit about what sea lions eat. How often do you have to feed them? It's a great question. So um, we have multiple sessions a day and that can consist of anywhere between four sessions up to 12 sessions if we really wanted to and had the time. Um, and those sessions consist of, depending on the animal, anywhere from one pound up to about five or six pounds. So just to give you a little uh, perspective, Hondo is a bigger male that we have and he's going to get a, an average of four to five pounds every session, which would probably bring him to a little over 25 pounds a day. Um, whereas Penny, who is a smaller female, doesn't require as much fish. So her session 
sessions probably consist of two to three pounds at most per day. Very good. Um, someone also asked, uh, why do the sea lions like jello? So that's a great question. Um, they don't all like it. So uh, something that we're doing, just like we taught them to um, find toys reinforcing, we're kind of training them to uh, enjoy jello as well. Hondo, he is a great boy. He actually enjoys it already. I didn't have to teach him um, to like it. Uh, so it's a texture thing, I'm pretty sure. So the jello that we feed them is sugarless, tasteless, uh, odorless. We do add color sometimes for fun. Um, but yeah, it's one of the ways that we can get them that extra hydration. So it's not required of them to eat it. It's more another form of enrichment mm -hmm. that we can give them and change up their day. All right, and switching over to another animal that you talked about sure. uh, during our first session. Um, what do armadillos eat? Great question. So they are technically insectivores, um, and Pickles gets a special diet for armadillos, but we also are able to give her bugs, which she finds very reinforcing. She's a big cricket fan, uh, and we also give her some types, certain types of fruits and vegetables. Nice. Uh, and then moving away, we've got a lot of questions coming in about very specific things to do with the animals. Uh, so we uh, went through several of those. We might hit a few more, but we're going to move to some more broad topics that have come in. Um, so first off, somebody asked, um, do you use math in your day-to-day -day work here? And I'll even broaden that and ask what subjects did you learn in school that do directly apply to what you use today? I'll take that one. Uh, yeah, we do use math every single day, whether it's figuring out uh, the amount of diets that we need to provide for each one of our animals, um, or configuring weights, um, even our veterinary staff um, just going through and uh, figuring out how much medication a particular animal would need. Uh, just like us, animals can get uh, colds here and there, so it's a very important part of our uh, daily regimen is checking on all of our animals. So uh, math is very, very uh, popular uh, subject that we use every single day. Uh, when, when you're in school and you say, I'm not ever going to use that, guess what? <laughs> you <laughs> might be using that later on in life. Nice. And what other, yeah, what other subjects do you use? Um, definitely English. I mean, we do a lot of writing, um, whether it's for different protocols that we're writing or emails that we're reaching out to people. Um, it's a very professional atmosphere. Uh, a lot of people do think we play with animals all day, but that is only a, a slim part of our day. Um, so we are technically still professionals and we have to give that off that professionalism. So we have to know how to spell. Uh, we have to know how to have good grammar. It's, um, it's, it's very big in our um, industry for sure. And I remember um, behind the scenes we had a little conversation and you talked about psychology as well, yes. or animal behavior. Yes. So, yeah. yeah, so um, as you get older, if you, this is a field that you're interested in, psychology is a very um, broad science, I would say, um, where you kind of have to get into the nooks and crannies and learn behavior as a whole. Um, and the best way to do that is going to be hands-on. Awesome. Um, and yes, so many questions coming in. We're going to try to get to as many as we can. Um, what are some of the other ambassador animals you have here? Um, well, Hutch cares for a lot of our reptile program and then our ambassador program um, is going to be uh, multiple species of exotic birds. So we have a lesser sulfur crested cockatoo, um, we have a blue and gold macaw, we have two beautiful uh, keelbill toucans, um, and then we have all of our reptile species which Hutch can talk about. Uh, we do have uh, one juvenile American alligator. We also have a juvenile Asian water monitor. Uh, we have two gopher snakes and a piebald ball python, a red tail boa. She's actually, uh, he's actually a Suriname, so he has that really bright uh, red tail. Uh, we also have a, a northern blue tongue skink. So we have a nice little variety to our reptile uh, repertoire. And then we also have uh, several species of bugs that are on exhibit that can also uh, come out onto the floor and. Uh, share the education as well. Perfect, awesome. Um, and a question came in from Mr. Anway's fifth grade class. Uh, do you ever get to swim with the animals? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> uh, the pinniped team, uh, they do some uh, water work with the pinnipeds, but we also will get in with our penguins. Uh, there's divers in our exhibits all the time, but uh, for a little bit of fun and give them a little bit of variety uh, in their enrichment, we will have uh, some of our animal care team and even some interns be able to go into the penguin exhibit and be able to relate with the birds. So some of the penguins really enjoy that okay, interaction. Yeah. Cool. We also do it with our Asian small clawed otters. Um, we have a lot of enrichment sessions throughout the day and they are um, very much seem to enjoy attention from our animal care specialists. So um, three of them were hand raised, so they are very used to people. Um, so we get in the water with them all the time. 
Very yeah. neat, very neat. Um, the question came in uh, quite a bit earlier that I thought was a fun one. What is the funniest thing that has happened <laughs> as a part of your job at the Odyssey <laughs> Aquarium? Or maybe something that happens regularly that you encounter? I think you're probably uh, funnier than I am. <laughs> I probably have a, a pretty good one. We, during our penguin interaction program, we get guests of all sh shapes and sizes, but we do get some quite a few uh, rather unique personalities as well. So we do have people that rent tuxes and will come in with our penguins, which the penguins enjoy very much. Um, and then we also have, uh, we've had a few people dress up as a penguin in their Halloween costume vest and come to our penguin interaction program. So it, uh, it's quite interesting to see how the penguins react nice. to that. Nice. Awesome. Um, another question going back to penguins. A uh, few people ask, how do you, how can you tell if a penguin is a boy or a girl penguin? Uh, if you stare at it long enough and it lays an egg, then it's a female. There you I'm go. just kidding. <laughs> um, we actually will take a small amount of blood during their initial exam and we can send that off to a geneticist just like you and I uh, for uh, our sexes. Uh, mm -hmm. We have different chromosomes, so do penguins. So we're able to tell which ones are boys and girls. Awesome. And then we have a few different people who also wanted to hear individually from both of you, what is your favorite animal, either in general or <laughs> here, or maybe favorite species, or however you want to answer that. Um, I think what's great about our job is that we get to work with a variety of animals, so no two days are usually the same. Um, I think we all do have our favorites, even though we're not supposed to. Um, I definitely, originally my favorite species was going to be dolphins. Um, and then I did an internship that changed my world and I've been a pinniped girl ever since. Um, so it's going to be those uh, sea lions that really have my heart. Uh, I started off with uh, cetaceans as well uh, and then growing through uh, different types of the field, so either rescue and rehab, um, working in zoos and aquariums, uh, I was able to pretty much just never say no to working with a species. Uh, so I did wind up working with penguins for quite some time, but I work with our penguins and seals at my previous facility, and that kind of broadened my horizons a little bit with the uh, with our seals, and then I was able to come in and uh, start working with the pinnipeds. So never saying no to working with an animal has always worked for me. Um, I always have the mom response of, I love all the animals that I work <laughs> with, because uh, they, they all give you uh, something a little right. bit different. Awesome. Um, another question um, that came in is, are the animals observed 24 hours a day? That's a great question. So we are technically open from almost nine to six every single day, but uh, most of us are here on site from anywhere from seven to nine o'clock at night, um, and we have life support that is here 24 seven. So even if our animal care specialists aren't on um, property for more than 12 hours a day, somebody is always here checking on the animals along with security as well. Perfect, perfect. Um, and then, yeah, wrap, we need to wrap it up here, I know, but I'm gonna try to fit in a few more. Uh, what conservation organizations do you partner with? That's a great uh, one question. very important one that uh, we do with our penguins is sand cob. Uh, so they save not only penguins, but other coastal species of birds, and they have uh, rehab and uh, release programs, but they also have chick bolstering projects, make sure that eggs and chicks are being taken care of. They'll go out and survey the, be survey the beaches. If they see anybody, then um, might fall to possible predation or, um, or being exposed to the climate, mm -hmm. uh, they'll bring them on in and they'll raise them up and release them back out into the beaches that they came from. So they've done incredible work with the African penguins, but we're also partnered up with uh, the Seafood Watch app through Monterey Bay Aquarium. So everybody can make sustainable choices when they're uh, going to the supermarket or going to the restaurant uh, to make sure that we're doing our part in uh, uh, making sustainable choices with seafoods. Uh, we also do a shark program uh, to raise money for shark conservation. Perfect. And we can link to some of those things that she just sure. mentioned um, uh, when we post this later today or uh, tomorrow um, on our website so that you can uh, easily find all those resources she just mentioned as well. Um, so I know, yeah, it is actually uh, 9.30 right now, so we need to wrap it up. So my final question for both of you is uh, for students watching who are like, that's, that's the job I want. I didn't know that was a career, but now I really want to do that. How, how do you advise them? What advice do you have for them to pursue that? And what can they do now at, you know, maybe fifth grade, eighth grade, who knows? Sure. Um, yeah, how can they prepare now? Uh, so I wasn't a very good student, as you saw in the previous video, um, but I worked extra hard. I definitely 
uh, sought help when I needed it and I wasn't afraid to ask and that's probably the biggest thing um, even if you know I was extremely shy in middle school it's very very important that you set yourself up for success now so that it gets easier later on uh, I think one of my big things I actually had a very big fear of public speaking that I had to overcome so uh, through high school and in college um, I took as many public speaking opportunities that I could uh, because I knew that was something that was going to hinder my progress uh, getting into the field uh, but just working hard and keeping at it never giving up uh, definitely helps you prevail so if this is something that you're really interested in doing keep up the hard work Perfect. Fantastic advice from both of you. Sure. Thank you both so much for being with us today. Thank you all for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed it and learned several things. Um, like I said earlier, uh, a video of today's entire broadcast will be posted on our website and on YouTube either later today or tomorrow. Um, and along with that, like you heard at the very opening of our show, we have got a brand new STEM opportunity uh, coming out called Solve It. Uh, and if you watched with us today, you're also going to be getting an email later today with some more details on that so your classrooms can participate in a brand new STEM uh, project there. So thank you so much for joining us and we hope to have you join us next month as well.